Hello, today I'm going to be looking at a Honda branded lawnmower. Recently Honda have been doing a lot of advertising featuring robotic lawnmowers and we've started to get asked questions by customers on how they compare to Ambrosio robots. Now I've always loved Honda petrol engines and in the world of lawnmowers they certainly have a fantastic reputation for easy starting and long service life. However, as a lawnmower dealer for over 20 years I've never been very impressed with their range of electric lawnmowers. This is generally because Honda don't actually make these products. They're often made by other manufacturers under license. So if you know what you're looking for, you can often find exactly the same lawnmower in another brand, much cheaper, without the Honda logo or colour scheme. It's kind of like a lawnmower pretending to be a Honda. This is surprisingly common practice in our industry and it allows manufacturers to complete their range and stay competitive. So we've got our hands on the new Honda Mimo HRM40 robotic lawnmower. And funnily enough, it's the same story here. This product is actually made by Bosch Green in Hungary and it's based on the Bosch Indigo XS300. I know when you first hear the word Bosch, you probably think that's a good thing. However, this should not be confused with Bosch Blue Power Tools or household goods like dishwashers and ovens. They're made by a completely different sector of the company. Now, Bosch Green power tools in the garden machinery world are fairly low down the pecking order in high performance quality garden tools. They tend to be orientated towards supermarkets as a price led branded product. Now we do sell uh, Bosch Green power tools and they've got their place in the market, but they're not something we would particularly recommend for somebody who's looking for pure high performance or long lasting garden tools. The MIMO HRM40 is the entry level model in the range and at the time of filming was priced at £1,109 on johnlewis.com. I'm going to be comparing it to the Ambrosio 20 Deluxe as this is their entry level robot and at the time of filming was priced at 849 I'm going to compare the physical features and major internal components on the two robots. The software and specifications have actually already been comprehensively compared by an expert at the robotmower.com and I'll put a link to their review in the description of this video. The Honda Mimo is suitable for a single lawn of up to 400 square metres. It runs for 30 minutes on a single charge and can cope with a sloping lawn up to 27 degrees. It runs on an 18 volt rechargeable lithium ion battery system. The Ambrosio 20 Deluxe is suitable for up to four lawns totaling 700 square meters. It runs for two hours on a single charge and can cope with lawn slopes up to 35%. And this robot runs on a 26 volt lithium ion battery system. Look at the physical proportions of these two robots side by side. They both have a similar width of cut with a Honda being a 19 centimeter and 18 centimeter blade on the 20 but as you can see, the outer shell on the Mimo is quite a bit wider. It's 34 centimetres wide as opposed to 29 centimetres wide on the Ambrosio. Lengthwise, they're very, very similar. We'll remove the top cover on the uh, Honda Mimo and you'll be able to see, I've unclipped it already, you'll be able to see the similarities compared to the Bosch Indigo with the shape. It's just a, an outer clip-on shell which changes it from green to white. Both robots have integrated carrying handles so they can be transported easily from garden to garden or to the storage area. On the Honda, it's located underneath the rear bumper, so you can put your hand in this slot here and carry it quite easily. On the Ambrosio, you've got a grab handle either side of the chassis, so you can carry it on either side like that. Very, very lightweight. They both weigh a very similar amount, uh, just under eight kilos on both of them. Bumpers. Let's look at how these two robots detect obstacles within the lawn. This can be garden furniture, trees or play equipment. We'll start by looking at the Ambrosio 20. This robot uses three methods to detect a collision. A mechanical rubber bumper connected to a Hall effect sensor that detects impacts on this active bumper. The next one is an accelerometer built into the motherboard to detect sudden unexpected changes in drive speed. And the last one is drive load monitoring. This is an algorithm in the software that monitors the current drawn by the rear drive motors. The other interesting feature on this robot is the front wheels are actually part of the active bumper mechanism. 
That means if a small low-lying low object falls below the bumper line, it can still be activated by the front wheels. So take a piece of wood and place it in front of the front wheels. As the wheels come and hit it, they actually activate the bumper. So even though it's below the bumper line, it can still detect that it's hit something. That's quite a nice feature we've not seen before. The Honda MIMO Bosch Indigo robots rely mainly on drive current monitoring and accelerometer readings in the software to detect a collision. There's no mechanical bumper or tactile method of this robot detecting a bump. From my experience, robots without a mechanical bumper of some kind are far more likely to get stuck or trapped on obstacles within the lawn. They also tend to wear out final drive components like gears, motors or motor drivers much quicker as it's always stressing the drive motors to detect an obstacle. On this type of robot, I would always recommend the use of perimeter wire islands to protect young trees and delimit other obstacles within the lawn. As depending on the surface conditions, this type of robot will actually push quite hard against an obstacle with a fair amount of force before it's detected. That's worth bearing in mind when you're planning your installation. Blades. The Honda Mimo has three swing tip blades attached to this plastic disc, giving it a cutting width of 19 centimetres. I'll be removing this disc uh, shortly to take a closer look at the blades. The Ambrosio 20 has an 18 centimetre stainless steel disc blade with four fixed cutters around the outside. I'll also be removing this to take a closer look. One thing that is worth noticing here when you have them side by side is the distance from the tip of the blade to the outer shell of the robot. On the Honda, uh, from the outer edge is approximately 10 centimetres. On the Ambrosio, with its smaller form factor, uh, from the tip of the blade to the outside is five centimetres. Meaning there's a lot less uncut grass along a wall or a fenced edge because the outer body of the robot is much closer to the blade. There's always going to be some strimming like there would be with a petrol mower if, you, if you're against a vertical fence or wall. If you've got terrain where the border of your lawn is meeting with a, a flush path or a, a patio or a driveway, then the robots can be installed so they hang right over the edge and both of them will cut over the edge of the lawn. But if you're going along um, a wall or a fence line, then this is where that distance makes a bigger difference. Something that's worth considering. Whilst we've got both robots stood up, we'll have a look at some of the other key features on these two robots. On the Honda Mimo, the rear drive wheels uh, are 40mm wide by 16cm in diameter. On the Ambrosio, they are 80mm wide by 13cm in diameter. Both robots feature a four-wheel design, so two caster wheels at the front on both robots, and these can revolve 360 degrees. The axle shafts supporting the front wheels on the Ambrosio are made of 8mm stainless steel. And on the uh, Honda Indigo, it's uh, supported by a, a plastic brace around the front wheel. The Honda doesn't have any kind of suspension. The front wheels can move in and out for detecting a lifted scenario or if the robot gets stuck in a hole. These uh, wheels are connected to sensors which detect a lift but they have no independent suspension uh, connected to the rear wheels. On the Ambrosio, the front wheels also have drop sensors built in, so that can detect when it's been lifted, but the front wheels have independent suspension, which is spring-loaded, and this means as the robot drives over an undulating surface or through contours, it keeps the rear drive wheels in contact with the ground. I'll demonstrate how that works in a moment. The charging contacts on the Ambrosio are these two stainless steel prongs at the front here and the charging contacts on the Honda are these two sockets where the base station plugs itself into there. Height adjustment. The Ambrosio 20 has an adjustable blade height range from 25mm to 70mm. The robot comes supplied with this blade height adjustment tool with millimetre markings down the side. To use the tool, you stand the robot up on its back and you insert the tool into the hole in the cutter deck here. Once that's inserted, a quarter turn clockwise unlocks the mowing deck 
And once that's unlocked, this deck can be slid in or out to the desired height, and that can be anywhere within that range. Once you've got the height that you want, you twist the, um, the tool in the anti-clockwise direction, and that locks the carriage into place. So it's quite simple and straightforward to adjust the height of cut. The Honda Mimo HRM40 has an adjustable blade height range from 30 to 50 mil. It has just three selectable heights. The increments are fixed at one centimeter, meaning you can only pick 30 mil, 40 mil, or 50 mil. So you can't fine tune a height of cut to say 35 or 42, which is a very limiting feature of the Bosch Indigo Mimo platform, and not what you'd expect to find on a robot costing over a thousand pounds. It works like this. By pressing on this height adjustment button here, you can go from 50 mil to 40 mil to 30 mil, and that's it. There's nothing in between. To bring the carriage back up to 50 mil, press the reset button. But you can't stop anywhere between the two settings. It's literally one, two, three, and that's it. Now, for some people, 30 mil might not be a low enough cut, considering the lowest cut on most petrol rotary mowers is 25 mil. So that's just something to bear in mind. If, uh, if you like a, a, a shorter finish. So talking about suspension, one of the many unique features on the Ambrosio is the fact that it's got a flex deck or suspension. And the easiest way to show you why that's effective is to take something and put it under one of the front wheels of a robot without suspension. So this piece of wood represents an undulation or a bump in the garden. Once one of the front wheels has been lifted or ridden over, something. You can see the stability of the robot is then compromised and pressure on the rear wheel is then removed. If we do the same thing with the Ambrosio, the flex deck um, allows the front end to twist and the adjacent wheel stays firmly planted on the ground. So this robot doesn't rock at all. I'll just turn it round and show you from top. You can see this bumper can twist, keeps pressure on this wheel, and there's absolutely no rock or loss of drive to the rear wheels. I'll show you with the Honda again, if I put that on here, you can see how much it affects a robot with no suspension. There's absolutely no rock. Also, when that wheel is lifted, because this is a fixed chassis, you can see this wheel here is now not doing anything, it's not actually on the ground or applying any pressure at all. Whereas on the Ambrosio, it remains firmly planted. So that's one of the, the design features that I really like on the Ambrosio. That flex deck really ensures that weight is kept on the back wheels, even when it goes over quite a large undulation like this piece of wood represents. So it's quite a, a nice way of demonstrating that. User interface. Now the Honda Mimo Bosch Indigo robot features a rather small 50 x 30 LCD monochrome display. It has four navigation arrow buttons, an enter button and a return button. And you use these keys to navigate through the menus and customize your settings and set your weekly schedule. Now this robot is not equipped with Bluetooth or any other wireless connectivity. So there's no, no mobile app you can download which seems a bit crazy because even my kitchen kettle at home has a mobile app. If you want app connectivity, there is another version of this robot called the Live version. It's the Honda HRM40 Live. And on that model, it uses a GSM module to connect to an app. So it's a little bit slower than a direct connection via Bluetooth, but you can alter the settings on an app using uh, that version of the robot. The Ambrosio 20 features a simplified set of controls. Instead of the large colour LCD touchscreen display found on most of the larger Ambrosio robot models, here we have a simplified set of four hotkey buttons. On and off, home, auto mode, stop and start. So the most common commands are available instantly without the need to navigate through menus or get your phone out your pocket. Don't let this minimalist design fool you though. This robot is extremely sophisticated and there's a myriad of customizable options available to you via the smartphone app for ISO and Android. It's connected via Bluetooth 4, so all of the advanced settings can be accessed 
from the comfort of your smartphone screen or your iPad. This app can also give you operational statistics, allow you to access the latest version of the user manual, and you can even upgrade the software of the robot directly from this app. So it's a great way of managing and maintaining your robot. Batteries. Now the battery is an extremely important part of any robotic mower and sometimes people focus all of their attention on the voltage of the battery as an indicator of how powerful the robot will be. The higher the voltage, the more powerful. There is some truth in that. If you compare the 12 volt drill with a 24 volt drill, the 24 volt drill will feel more powerful and have more guts. However, my advice would be to focus more on the amp hour rating or watt hour rating of the battery as the most useful indication for comparison. If you think about the amp hour rating or watt hour rating as the robot's fuel tank, the bigger the number, the more fuel the robot can hold. And this means less trips back to the charging station to keep on top of the lawn. This reduced, reduces wear and tear on the robot and on the lawn surface itself. So let's have a look at these two batteries and see how they compare. The Honda Mimo Bosch Indigo runs on an 18 volt system with a 2.2 amp hour, 41 watt hour lithium battery. This battery gives around a 30 minute run time and charges in about 45 minutes. I have to say that's a very short run time for any robotic mower in any brand. Considering the price of this product, it's a little underwhelming. For Honda to cover its maximum rated 400 square meters, it needs to operate for 14 hours a day, seven days a week. That's a lot of trips back to the charging station each day. This will leave the owner 10 hours free lawn time each day, which will probably be through the night. The Ambrosio 20 uses a 26 volt lithium ion battery with a 2.5 amp hour or 65 watt hour capacity. The 20 is also much more energy efficient with that capacity, giving a runtime of two hours. This model takes around 60 minutes to charge. So in comparison, this robot runs for four times the amount of time compared to the Bosch Indigo on a very similar sized battery. For the 20 to maintain its maximum rated 700 square meters, it will require 10 hours a day, giving you potentially 14 hours free lawn time each day. So the Honda needs 14 hours to cover 400 square meters and the Ambrosio needs 10 hours to cover 700 square meters. It just gives you an idea of the difference in technology on these two robots. Motors. Motors and reduction gears really take the brunt of the work in a robotic mower. They are the major component that takes all of the hammer of the day-to-day -day operations. So good quality, powerful, well-engineered motors and gears are where you want the manufacturer to really spend the money well. So let's have a look at the motors from the Honda Mimo. This is the blade motor which drives the cutting disc containing the blades. Um, these are the two drive motors with planetary gear. Now I was uh, very surprised to see that the Honda Mimo are still using the older style carbon brush motors as uh, most manufacturers have moved over to brushless induction technology. This might be one of the reasons why the Mimo has such a short 30 minute runtime as this type of motor is not so energy efficient. Brush motors generally have a shorter service life compared to brushless and the carbon brushes in this motor are not replaceable as it's a crimped together design. Having said that, the specification and size of the motors look well matched to the application. I've seen some robots on the market using carbon brush motors that look like they've been taken straight out of a kid's toy. Uh, this is certainly not the case here. The Mimo uh, uses a planetary style gear uh, located just here in the drive uh, section here. So you've got your drive motor, carbon brush motor just here. And then in this section here is the planetary uh, gearbox. And on the end you've got a hex drive which goes inside the wheel. Looks well made and, uh, and sturdy. The Ambrosio 20 Deluxe is using entirely brushless motor technology for both the mowing motor and the drive motors. Now these are not the same as the brushed motors you'll find on other brands of robotic lawnmowers. These are industrial grade. That means that they've been hand assembled and they're wound using H-class triple insulated copper windings designed to give a very long service life. This is a common design philosophy amongst the Ambrosio robot range. Even though this is an entry level model, it's still got extremely high quality components like the motors. Now, this robot also uses a planetary style gear for the real drive wheels. This is one of the rear drive units. 
this is the induction brushless motor at the back. That's connected to a gearbox inside this section. And the whole thing is then surrounded by a large steel heatsink. This tubular heatsink here expands the surface area and draws heat away from the motor and gearbox. That also extends the service life of the unit. It's held into the robot with this steel faceplate and it has a steel hex drive which fits inside the rear wheel to drive it. It's an extremely high quality unit. The, uh, the mower motor's got a large aluminium blade boss uh, on the end of it. That's what the blade fits onto. And uh, you can see there it is a, it's a really nice, well-made, high quality unit. Blades. We'll start with a Honda. So the Honda Mimo has a 19 centimeter width of cut and that's made up using three 40mm swing blades attached to an ABS plastic disc. This disc has metal threaded inserts moulded into it and um, the blade guard which this sits inside is just here. This is a dish shaped design and the motor protrudes through the dish and the disc fits onto the hexagon drive on top of the motor there. And when the motor spins up the centrifugal force sends these blades out to give you a 19 centimetre cutting width. The blade guard itself is opened at the front and semi-open at the back to allow the grass to pass through. So uh, one of the other things I noticed about these swing blades, there's quite a few robots on the market that use swing blades. Most of them use actually razor blades which are about half a mil thick. Um, the one on the uh, well, the Bosch Indigo Honda Mimo, um, they use 1.2mm thick blades, so they look a little bit more durable than uh, these Husfana ones, so that's quite good. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, the Honda Mimo blade system. The Ambrosio 20 Deluxe uses a four-bladed cutting system consisting of a stainless steel, hardened stainless steel disc that has four 20mm fixed cutters around the outside. 10mm of the cutter is at a 30 degree angle and 10mm of it is horizontal and this aids the mulching action. The blade itself uh, is housed inside this brand new uh, blade guard design and this blade guard has got a couple of innovations on it. One of them is it has a rake all the way around the outside of it and the idea is as the cutter deck passes over the grass it flicks the grass up, allowing the blade to get to it more easily. So if I just place the blade centred on the blade boss, you can imagine as the grass is passing through this comb, it's getting flicked up and then the blade can pass and cut it off. So that's quite a nice little innovation. The other thing that's interesting about this blade guard is the top of it is made of silicone rubber. And the idea there is to prevent grass from sticking to the underneath of the deck. If you can imagine the robots going out early in the morning when the grass is wet and dewy, that grass and mulch can be very, very sticky. And the idea of this surface, which is extremely difficult for the grass to stick to, keeps the underneath of that deck clean and clear and reduces the need for you to clear it out. So that's quite a nice little innovation there. In addition to the standard blade, Ambrosia have also introduced a new star blade. Now this designer blade is more similar to what you'll find on the robots in the rest of the Ambrosio range. It features a much larger 55cm sharpened cutting edge. It still has the sloping design which flattens out at the tip uh, to aid mulching and that will be available as an accessory going forward. Motherboards. We'll start with the Ambrosio. The 20 uses a scale back version of the company's AM4000 motherboard. It's actually the same motherboard they use in all of the high end robots like the 4.0, L250, 350 and even the industrial L450 robots. It just doesn't have some of the high temperature handling and LCD touchscreen drivers that those robots require. This PCB is built in a totally different way and it's in a different class to all other robotic lawnmowers on the market. The design here is what you would see in an industrial application or piece of medical equipment. This is because Zucchetti, which manufacture the Ambrosio robots, are a company that design and build industrial automation systems for factories. And they also make medical equipment. So this is just the way that they do things. The motherboard is split into two different layers. This upper section handles all the high current 
loads like charging the battery, driving and controlling the speed of the motors. This allows air to circulate uh, between the two boards and keep the heat down. It reduces interference between the high current switching and the sensitive electronics and it also makes the PCB much smaller so they can make a more compact unit. These large red and white uh, connectors are used to connect the battery and the motors in the product. They're made by high rows and rated at 30 amp which is much more robust than you would expect to see in this type of application. The uh, battery, the 2.5 amp hour battery is switched on and off by a 20 amp relay. So you really get a feel for the over-engineering that's going on here. I'll just show you one of the connectors. This is one of the drive motors and you can see how substantial those connections are. So that will prevent burning out and it's a really robust positive connection on there. Here you can see a bank of 18 Infineon Optimos uh, high-powered transistor drivers. They're responsible for driving the uh, motors on the robot, the drive motors and the mower motors. It's worth mentioning that these components are massively over specification and are designed to comfortably drive much higher, more powerful motors found on top of the range robots like the industrial L450i. The lower section PCB is the logic board or brain of the robot. This is where all of the calculations in the software are made. The microprocessor is an ARM Cortex M3 400MHz 32-bit with 12 analog digital converters. This is a very powerful fast chip, meaning the robot can react quickly in its environment and it has plenty of processing power. It's actually way over what's required to run this type of small robot but it allows for future software upgrades for many years to come. It also forms the foundation of the company's move into AI. So you can update the software on this robot using the Ambrosio remote app. It connects to the robot using Bluetooth 4 and it's totally free to update at any time. The board also has some other interesting components. It's got a digital compass, an accelerometer, a micro SD a card slot which forms like a black box recorder to record all the log files and uh, moves that the robot makes. All of the capacitors on this board are also the solid type which um, are the same sort of components you'll see on computer servers so really really high quality. On the upper board there's also some replaceable fuses so uh, you don't see that on consumer electronics very often anymore uh, they're normally all solid state and not replaceable, but these are automotive style replaceable fuses which protect the battery and the mower motor. And again, you've got uh, the, the large solid type capacitors on this board. The Honda Mimo Bosch Indigo uses a single PCB motherboard that combines the high current handling components like MOSFET motor drivers, relays, charging circuits, with the low current microprocessor and logic systems. This is by far the most common arrangement that we see in robotic lawnmowers because it's the lowest cost way to make this type of control gear. Now, if there was any doubt as to whether the Honda Mimo was in fact the Bosch Indigo, you can see actually printed on this motherboard Bosch Indigo S mainboard PCBA and there's a Bosch part number there. So there's absolutely no doubt at all that this is exactly the same robot. The Bosch Indigo Honda Mimo CPU is located here. It's a Freescale E200 64MHz 32-bit processor with 10 analog digital converters. Although this is a much older chip from around 10 years ago, it still has plenty of space and power for this application. The Bosch Indigo version of this robot can have the software updated by downloading a file onto a USB flash drive from the company's website, inserting it into the back of the robot and using one of the menu options to download the file. However, I could not find this option available for the Honda branded version. So you may need to take this robot to a dealer to have the software updated because they use a customized version of the software. Um, although I can't formally identify it, I believe this component here is the accelerometer which assists with the bumper detection. This uh, board also has a, an automotive style relay for turning the battery on and off and it has a button cell for keeping the uh, clock alive. Um, the capacitors on this board are the more conventional electrolytic type, they're not the same as the 
super high quality long lasting capacitors found on the Ambrosio board um, but the, uh, the capacitor is just there. Now both boards have a conformal coating to prevent uh, moisture damaging the boards and uh, that's the same on, on both products. On the underside of the board here you've got two wire sensors so uh, they're the wire sensor coils for detecting the wire on this board. So uh, that's the Honda Mimo motherboard. Charging stations and power supplies. I've lined up both the base stations from these two robots so we can compare them. Uh, this is the Honda Mimo Bosch Indigo base station. This is the Ambrosio 20. As you can see, they're both almost exactly the same size. So they'll take up the same type of footprint in the garden. There's nothing really between them. We'll start by having a closer look at how the Ambrosio one is set up. Um, the charging contacts are these two stainless steel plates here. As the robot drives in, uh, it drives onto these plates and makes contact using these two stainless steel charge connectors at the front bumper. The uh, top of the base station transmitter, there's an LED status indicator which gives you some information about if the robot's charging or if the wire signal's being transmitted. And the perimeter wire connects underneath the transmitter head using these two quick release connectors. So the incoming cable connects to the red one, the outgoing cable connects to the black one. And that's powered by this extremely thick, heavy duty, eight mil power supply cable. Uh, this is very substantial. It can be buried in your border edges of your garden and you haven't got to worry about strimming it and cutting it because it's, it's very, very thick and substantial. Um, that's connected to an IP65 outdoor rated power supply just here. And um, that connects using this uh, quick release connector. So on the, uh, the Bosch base station, the charging contacts are these two pins here. And those two stainless steel pins plug into the female sockets on the front of the robot just there. So as the robot drives in, it just plugs itself in. On top of the base station, there's also a, an LED indicator. It gives you information again if it's charging or the wire signal's being transmitted. And the perimeter wire connects in using these two push connectors. Very, very similar to the ones found on the Ambrosio. So uh, incoming cable connects to the red, outgoing to the black, and then you've got a power supply connector here for the power supply cable. And uh, this is the power supply supplied with this model. It has the long cable attached to it at the power supply end, and the connector is at the base station end on this model. The cable itself, it feels nice quality. It's five mil thick, um, certainly better than I've seen on some other robots on the market. Uh, not quite as thick as the Ambrosio, but still feels good quality and, and well made. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the comparisons I've made in this video and have helped you compare the build quality and specifications of these two robots. I think you can see by paying extra for a brand name you know like Honda might not always get you the best robot for the money. If you'd like more information on either of these products, please visit honda.co.uk for the Mimo and ambrosio.co.uk for the 20. If you'd like to talk to us or have questions, please visit moamagic.co.uk or give us a call. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please click uh, like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos in the future. Thank you for watching.